This is our prayer in his name and for his sake. Amen. I'm currently uh, the director of a, a, a school. It's actually an evangelism training school in Pullman, Michigan. And what we do there is we, we, uh, we basically have two main purposes. One is to, to, uh, for the students who come to help them to get grounded in what they understand about Bible truth so that they can have a confidence in what they believe in. And we train them to effectively share that Bible truth. And we started our session. We have two, two sessions that we run. One is a three-week, one is a 14-week, and they run together. And they start at the same time. We started August 17. So we've been in session about a week and a half. Well, I got a call just a couple days ago. And the person on the phone says, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'd like to uh, find out how I can go to your school. And I said, okay, well, let me transfer you over to Emmanuel Roth. He's my associate director, and he's the administrator. And I said, let me transfer you to uh, Emmanuel Roth. And the person said, is this Pastor Mark Howard? And I said, yes, it is. And he said, uh, no, you're the one I want to talk to. And I said, okay. Well, actually, I said, um, our class has been in session for uh, a week and a half already. Well, are you going to be down at the Remnant Rally? I said, yes, I am. Well, I'll talk to you down there. <laughs> and just then, I, I, in fact, I began to answer, well, you know, t uh, I'm actually going to be down there Thursday night, and, and when are you going to be down? And then the wheels started turning, and it clicked in my mind, this is Dave Berthume. <laughs> now, some of you know that Dave Berthume works for Remnant Publications, and he doesn't have a southern accent. And as soon as I begin to process that, he starts laughing on the, end of the other end of the phone and says, I got you. Now, there's some background history in that that I'm not going to give you tonight. Uh, I kind of deserved it. Um, I had that coming because uh, I, I often would, would play pranks on Dave. And, and so I, I found out, it, it, it dawned on me at the last minute that Dave had been playing an imposter. He really wasn't a potential student at all. Well, I want to talk to you about an imposter or an imposture that's taking place in the Christian world today. The title of the message tonight is Another Jesus. Another Jesus. And I want you to turn in your Bibles. I hope you have your Bibles. We're going to do probably more of a Bible study tonight than anything else. Is that okay? Sure it's okay. You're the Thursday night crowd. You know, always the first crowd that comes, like on a weekend thing, Friday night, Saturday, but Thursday night, you're the guys that are just intense. You're the ones that you brought your Bibles. You were hoping I would say we were going to do a Bible study tonight, Amen. right? Amen. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Take your Bibles, go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Notice the words of the Apostle Paul. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Paul has just finished talking to the Christian church here in Corinth about how he has basically betrothed them, engaged them to one husband, even Christ. And then he says in verse 4, or that they would be married to Christ, uh, let's start with verse 3. He says, but I fear, lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Christ. Now that word simplicity, have you ever heard, anybody ever heard the word duplicity? Okay, sometimes we don't think of it this way, but simplicity and duplicity sometimes can be compared together. Simpl duplicity is when somebody is being uh, two-sided, two-faced, deceptive. And Paul's talking about deception and he's fearing that we would be deceived and be drawn away from the simplicity, the singleness of purpose, or, 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 or the singleness of viewing Christ. I want you to notice how he says this here. That your minds may be, he's concerned, he says, that your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he who comes preaches another what? Another Jesus whom we, the apostles, have not preached. 
or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. What he's basically saying to the, he, he's actually uh, kind of chastising gently the Corinthian believers for just about believing anything that people tell them. He says, if somebody comes and preaches another Jesus, you have so little discernment, you'd probably believe it. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you something. There are a lot of different Jesuses being preached today. Let me explain what he's saying here. I want you to understand something. There's a term in the Bible called Christ, okay? That's a term. That, that's, a, that's a title. Christ was not Jesus' last name. Christ it comes from the Greek word Christos. It means the anointed one. That's in the New Testament. The, the Hebrew equivalent in the Old Testament is the word Messiah. That means anointed one. They're titles. When Jesus asked his disciples who they thought that he was or who they said that he was, Peter answered Jesus, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's a title. You're not just Jesus of Nazareth. You're not just an earthly man. You're not just, you're the Son of God. You're the Messiah. The Christ is a title. And the Bible says that there would be coming, uh, there, there would come false Christs. But Paul doesn't say another Christ. You know, if he would say here, if he was saying that, that, that uh, he, if he who comes preaches another Christ, he could be, so it could be anybody who says, I'm the Messiah, this Jesus of Nazareth wasn't. But what Paul's specifically pointing out here is that there will be people that claim to be following Jesus, the same Jesus that the apostles claimed to follow, the only problem is that the Jesus they're teaching really doesn't fit the historical Jesus. He doesn't do any of the things that the Jesus that the apostles taught did. They, they, they don't, he doesn't say any things or teach the things that the Jesus that the apostles taught taught. Did you get that? In other words, they would profess to believe in Jesus. They would say the name Jesus but the Jesus they claim to believe in did not match the Jesus the Bible talks about. And as I said, there are many different Jesuses being preached today. What do I mean by that? Simply this. You can say the name Jesus all you want, but Jesus was a real person, a divine human person, who lived, who taught, who the Bible bears witness of, and if the Jesus you believe in is not the Jesus the Bible speaks of, then you're believing in another Jesus, the one Paul warned you about. Are you with me so far? Amen. Now, there's one specific area that I want to focus on tonight. Our focus this weekend is this temple, the sanctuary. How many of you have studied about the temples in the Bible? The Old Testament sanctuary temple, the New Testament, some of you have. I want you to see something in the book of Hebrews, which I believe was written by the Apostle Paul as well. I want you to notice an admonition that Paul gives us in the book of Hebrews. We're talking about another Jesus. What kind of Jesus does the, pop, what does the Bible preach? What is the Jesus of the Bible doing? Maybe it would be an easier question for me to ask what he did. I think a lot of Christians would be in agreement upon that. What did Jesus do? Jesus is the one that came onto this earth and he died for our sins on Calvary's cross. We would probably be pretty universal right there. Everybody would be at the same place. The question I want to ask tonight is, what did he do next? What did he do next? In fact, before we go to Hebrews 3, I want you to look at John chapter 16 and find that Jesus asked that same very question of his disciples. John chapter 16, Matthew, Mark, Luke. John chapter 16 and verse 5. Jesus has been teaching his disciples about the trials that are coming. He's been trying to tell the disciples that he's going to be crucified, but that he's going to be raised again. He tells his disciples he's going away, and this is what happens there. This is what he says in John 16, verse 5. Notice what it says. He says, but now I go away to him who what? 
Who did what? Okay, we're gonna, that's gonna, we're gonna play up on that in just a moment. Him who sent me, now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you asks me, where are you going? Why is Jesus saying this? Does it sound like he wants them to ask? He wants them to be interested. 